Hey folks, how you doing? Uh, we'll do a video today of a uh, real nice little gun I got in my collection. Uh, it's my first railed 1911 I ever bought. It's a Colt rail gun. Uh, now this one came in black, uh, Cerakoted black. I changed the color on it. I changed it over to, uh, I don't know what it's called, it's the Elite Series of Cerakote. Um, but uh, it's a nice color, it's kind of a, I don't know, earth tan color uh, but it's a it's a nice color I like it and it holds up really good that elite series actually does hold up a little bit better than the uh, standard Cerakote but uh, this one is my uh, Colt railgun chambered in 45 ACP um, we'll show you a little of the particulars on it uh, I've got the Novak rear sight on it just like it comes with a factory but I blacked the dots out and I've got a uh, Trigicon, I believe it's Novak, I believe I got it from Novak, it's their Mega Dot uh, front sight, so it's got a, a large white dot up front. It's got the EGW thumb safety, it's got the STI short trigger in it, and it's got the Smith & Alexander uh, Magwell on it, that's the Slim Magwell. This one has the Slim VZ grips on it, they're the Lennon Micarta. Um, and that's pretty much how I set all of them up. This one, along with most of my regular 1911s, have a little bit of an extended mag release because I've got short uh, fingers. So uh, I've got an extended mag release on there. Got it on my other 1911s too. I don't think I've shown it before. Now this one, I don't know if you can see it. It's got a stipple job on the front. Uh, I stippled that myself. Uh, I like, I like, I, I, I wanted to keep this one kind of a classic look. Didn't want to go too crazy with it. So uh, stipple jobs used to be real, real popular so, uh, before checkering became so popular. But I stippled this one myself and it turned out pretty good. I bordered the top and bottom and I stippled all this in here. It provides a, a pretty good traction. Now, it's not as good as checkering, but uh, still a pretty good traction. Uh, this gun, surprisingly for a factory gun, it shoots lights out. Uh, probably got Three or four thousand rounds to this gun, something like that. Not a terrible amount, but uh, this gun shoots lights out. It is a shooter. So uh, I'm gonna take it out and shoot it a little bit today, and let y'all uh, see it in action. Hope you enjoy it. All right, we'll do the bare solutions drill with my Colt rail gun. See how this baby performs. Not the greatest in the world. <laughs> not the gun, me. Uh, totally different trigger than other 1911s I've got. I've not really massaged this trigger that much. But uh, let's try it again. See if I can pick that speed up a little bit. I did it in a 790. So let's see if I can pick that up some. All good hit. Much better, much better, much better. 690, 691. So uh, much better, took a second off the time. Uh, 45 is not harder to recoil, or it's not harder to manage the recoil than a nine millimeter. It's different. It's different recoil than a nine millimeter. And I've been shooting nine millimeter almost predominantly for the last, oh, five, six years, maybe longer, and uh, I'm having to get used to shooting a 45 again. Uh, not because it's hard to tame the recoil, but because it's just a different recoil. So uh, let's move on to a different drill. All right, five by five drill with the Colt rail gun.
not bad. 1550, not super fast, but fast enough. So uh, move on to a different drill now. Right, I'm gonna show you what the recoil is like on this uh, rail gun. I'll do it full speed and then in slow motion. purposefully going to go slow to try to get good accurate hits on target try to get warmed back up to this uh, railgun again Go down here and take a look. You can tell I was going slow on purpose. Still dropped one or two, but uh, there you go. Transitioning from target to target. My headshots, I, that was from a while back. A little low there. Headshots, one low. Headshots, a couple low there. But overall, not too bad. Um, I'm going to play around with that a little more, try to clean that up some. All right, I'm going to work on some transition drills here. Uh, pick up the pace a little bit maybe, but still try to keep it slow. my fault. That was my fault. I didn't have the mag seated good. Headshots now.
folks. I'll give you a little brief rundown of my uh, Colt railgun. You can see, old girl's pretty dirty. Uh, doesn't take much to get a 45 dirty uh, powder that most, well, I use uh, Winchester ammo usually, but when I reload, I use two thirty Winchester 231, and it's a pretty dirty powder. It burns real dirty, so you get a lot of carbon soot build up. But let me tell you about this gun right here. I bought this gun brand new. I don't know. It's been several years back, and uh, it came in the box. It was black. Uh, good old Dr Pepper, but. Um, it came as black. Um, I Cerakoted it this uh, kind of tan, earthy looking color. I don't know if you can really tell. It's the uh, Cerakote Elite. Don't remember what color it is. But I also stippled the front strap on it. I don't know how well that comes in in the camera. But uh, it actually turned out really nice. I don't know if it's coming in clear on the camera or not. But it, it provides pretty good texture. This gun is actually a really good shooter. Uh, I had two malfunctions. Both of them were mag related. Uh, well, one was me related. Somehow I shoved 11 rounds in a 10 round mag. And uh, the other one I think was the same thing. But uh, uh, two malfunctions, both of them out of 10 round mags. If I'm carrying a 1911, I will not carry a 10 round mag. Uh, the highest capacity I'll go with a 45 ACP is a uh, eight round mag. I usually carry uh, either Wilson, Chip McCormick, or Trip Research mags. Um, usually range mags, doesn't matter to me. I'll run any of them as long as they're fairly reliable. But uh, I did have two malfunctions. Those two malfunctions, I can promise you, were related to, to me more than anything. Somehow, this big dummy behind the trigger put in uh, an extra round and a 10 round mag. I don't know how I fit that in there, but I did. But um, um, what can I say about this gun? It's reliable. Um, it runs good. Uh, it shoots. Uh, this is one of those guns you get from the factory that you're just surprised when you get it that a factory gun shoots this tight of groups. I've shot uh, sub two inch groups uh, with this easy with factory ammo at 25 yards off a bench. Uh, bench resting it. I've shot you know close to inch and a half groups with this at 25 yards. Uh, but that is bench resting it. That's not freehand. Uh, so this gun, for a factory gun, is just a good shooter. It's a good shooter. Um, not much I can say about it. I like it. It's a good gun. It's actually not a bad price for what you get it for. I think you can get these for about $1,000. Um, I like it. I'm not a big rail guy on a 1911, but I like this one. Um, it adds a little heft out front. Uh, helps tame some recoil. Um, but I am a big advocate of having lights on your on your carry gun and uh, this one you can hang a light right there off the front standard uh, picked any rail so uh, if you like the video give it a thumbs up I appreciate y'all watching hopefully I'll try to have another one out for you next week